You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Room. And he said, smells like fish and chips. I said, fish and chips, poisson et free for me. Thank you very much. Anyway, Mike, what have you got for us today? And this week I've got a bit of a story about body modification that's gone a little bit awry. Ooh, sticky needles in and chopping things off and sticking things on. Ooh. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at The Cud TV on social media where you can follow us, thecud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, just search for Chewing The Cud. And, and, uh... and hit subscribe. But we'll pretend, we'll pretend. And as names traverse across the bottom of the screen, <laughs> I said bottom, <laughs> we get ready for this week's show, Biz and Lee. Are you ready for a new Netflix dating show? No. Well, you're going to get it. Uh. It's coming. Now, this is called Dated and Related, which initially wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Okay. You know, so you're not dating your member of your own family, which okay. would be entertaining. Um, it's called Dated and Related and promises the, to be the most awkward dating show in history. Okay. So what basically happens is, is that, um, well, well we've, got a, we've got a picture of the poster, which will kind of give you an idea of the shenanigans. So, you know, as usual, hideously deformed people, ugly... Socially inept, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so they're gathering them. They're gathering them all. And shooting them. And shooting them. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, 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 calling everybody with abs. So it starts off with the shot of the beach. A voiceover says, "Imagine being swept away to a luxury villa in the south of France. There, you're there to find love in the most romantic country in the world with other gorgeous singles." The unknown voice then reveals the twist. Oh, did I not mention the catch? You'll be joined by your brother or sister who's also looking for love. Okay. So basically, pairs of siblings are being teamed up together to try and find love with the other sibling kind of... That feels a bit incestuous still. It does a little bit, doesn't it? So basically so what they've got... Me and sister in a lovely little island and we start dating the same... No. So, the, so your sibling acts as your ultimate wingman to try and... Yeah. I it, love my sister to death, but no. Yeah. No. Um, so they will act as your ultimate wingman and help you find love, or will they scupper your plans and call you out on your bullshit? So if you're kind of like, you know, going, Leo Leo Tits, I'm like really into, uh, you know, like aqua sports and, um, you know, and then you've got your sibling going, what? You're lying in get. The, the nearest you've got, to, the Aquasports is aqua well, oh yeah. yourself in the shower. That kind of thing. We've got, we've got a picture of some of the cast. Okay. This is the main cast, and then we've got another picture of, of... Just some of them. Some of them, yeah, brothers and sisters, siblings. Okay. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, so Dated and Related will feature eight duos, seven sets of siblings, and one set of coven, cousins, covens, cousins, around the world from New Jersey, Texas, the UK, Canada, and Cyprus. Randomly, Cyprus added <laughs> added to the list. Um, yeah, it's going to be on imminently. Imminently. And now. It could well be on now. Who knows when it's going to be on? It's just going to appear. I'm not going to watch it because it's just not my thing. But if you're if you're a person who likes Love Island, you see, I like <laughs> the idea of Love Island. I just don't like being logistically difficult. Logistically difficult. Do you not remember when they said that you can't have LGBTQ no, people they won't on do the it. show because it would be logistically, logistically difficult? Logistically difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all pile of Todd, isn't it? It is. The whole lot. Every, all of it is. But I just say, so I have I have tried to flirt with a barman with my sister in presence. All right, okay. So on holiday, and I'm flirting. <laughs> she just literally went, oh, f him, don't you? Like, that's killed my, the mood there, Joanne. She's saying, oh, okay. he's straight, doesn't stop me, Joanne. Well, that's an awkward yeah. situation. So then she went, do you want to my brother? Well, I mean, blunt and straight to the point. She knew what she was doing. He went, no, and walked out. Oh, OK. Thanks. Thanks. Awkward. Thanks, yeah. All right. So you won't be applying for season two? No. No. OK. I might go with a, a, a photocopy of me. She said, well, I might go with your grandma. This was a, <laughs> a bit, bit awkward. She's been dead for a couple of years. <laughs> Ignore Granny. She's just a bit stiff, yeah. <laughs> She livens up when you put a margarita in a coffin. Oh, lovely. 
Anyway, let's move on from that because I'm feeling slightly disturbed. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge. Everybody don't loves go, a bit of Jennifer do Coolidge. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna. Don't. At some point, I will do her accent. <laughs> but you so can't she, do her accent. I can. She's saying that the that one of her iconic film roles roles helped her have sex with two hundred people. Okay. So as a result of starring in the American Pie series, a Stifler's Mom, a Stifler's mom um, it, it basically says who? Stifler's mom. Mum. No, it's You're American. You're not American. But she's called Stifler's mom. In the, she's not called Stifler's mom. Stifler's what is, mom. What is Stifler's mom? It's Stifler's mom. A dilf. No, a milf. <laughs> she's a milf. Yeah. You just outed someone there. <laughs> so in an interview with Variety, she's basically revealed that playing Stifler's mom really upped her body count. As in yeah. shag number, so yeah, she's 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 kind of like saying in the film and the subsequent um, sequels, she played. Je I didn't know she had a first name, Janine Stifler. Yeah, that sounds like a porn name, doesn't it, Janine Stifler? Um, she has a, a fling. Is it, is it a porn name, Janine Stifler? Janine. Do you need a stiff? No, it doesn't. Anyway, um, yeah, we've got. Anyway, let's just have a picture of her from 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 American Pie. Um, we've got a couple of pictures of her. There, there she is with the the young chap that she um, she she boned. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Um, so the, it apparently dubbed her immediately a milf. Coming up with it, with the, look at the generation. Oh, this is how she, she's how she's now. That's how she spends her time. Making throwing pots. a pot. Yeah, she says, you know, I got a lot of got a lot of play being a milf, and I got a lot of sexual action from American Pie. There are so many benefits to doing that movie. It was then she revealed there would be like two hundred people I would never have slept with had I not been in that film. She's gone on to start in multiple TV shows and films and become an all round gay icon. Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> I knew I was going to do it. The trick to do Jennifer Coolidge is you start off with Gollum. Oh, you're pretty. And then... <laughs> that wasn't Gollum. Gollum from the... No, no, that wasn't Gollum. Gots to have it. Gots to. Gots to have it. Gots to. Dirty lying hobbies. Yeah, stores it it says, and then you lower your... No. It's like a share having a stroke. Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, my God. Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah, anyway. Is, is that all she says? Yeah, I can't think of anything else <laughs> she, she says. She says her name. Our Stifler's mom, Jennifer Coolidge. That sounds like Sean Connery. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Sean Connery did drag as Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. yeah. Let's go on to one of my favourite topics, Dolly Parton. Oh, okay. Uh, she's excited, is Dolly Parton, because they are launching a brand new roller coaster at her beloved Dollywood. She's so in, in Dollywood... No one can hear you scream. No one can hear you scream. <laughs> um, so she's seventy six. That's that's not obviously that's that's, the, that's, that's actually drive in <laughs> to, to Dollywood. She opened the world class amusement park in nineteen eighty six, and announced recently that a brand new ride called Big Bear Mountain oh. will be launching in twenty twenty three. Reportedly costing twenty five million dollars. Those are some of the other roller coasters that they have in Dollywood. Okay. Um, but according to press release, so the Big Bear Mountain. You see now, she knows her. She knows her, her, her audience. audience. So that that could be a, that could be a saucy ride, but it's not really. So basically, it's three separate rides, high speed carousel, multiple airtime hills, whatever those are, uh, and a pass behind a waterfall. Um, because she because she likes all. The I like a pass behind. Yeah. So basically, but what she said is that she won't be having a go on it, and she doesn't have a go on any of her roller coasters in in uh, because she said fear of losing her hair, falling off, a wig falling off. Okay. And she says, and God knows what else will fall off me. Um, so we've, I think we've got a picture of her in a Ferris wheel, which is as much as I think she will do. Um, I think it's can get windy at the top of a Ferris wheel. Mm, you can put your hand on your head then, can't you? You're not whizzing up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so she's excited that fans will be able to travel the Smoky Mountains themselves mm -hmm. via the ride. So the Smokies are all about adventure and going exploring. I'm excited our guests will be able to head out on their own trip into the Smokies to see if they can find that big bear, she tweeted. Yeah. <clears throat> well, <laughs> she goes Dolly on. has opened up Dollywood <laughs> dogging area. <laughs> Whether he's out there or not, I'm sure they'll find a lot of memories along the way that'll keep them forever. Keep, yeah. Yeah, but but sadly, it's not a gay-themed 
ride. It is. Um, dogging area. It's a dogging area. The, the president of Dollywood has said it's a fam it's family friendly and it's described. The president as of Dollywood. Yeah, President Eugene Norton. He's the president of Dollywood. President of Dollywood. That's yeah. That's how he introduces himself. Hi, I'm Eugene, president of Dollywood. How can I help you? Bring our assistance. That's how he says it. Yeah. So he's saying <laughs> it's family friendly, comfortable, fun. No homosexuals. None at all. There you go. Is that what he said? Right. No, I made that bit up at the end. <laughs> but he did say it's family friendly and comfortable fun. Lots of lube. Yeah. And with that, I'm closing my tablet on this week's show is news. Well, there were choices made there. None of them necessarily good. Um, but yeah. Totally welcome. Totally welcome. You sound like Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. No, Mr. Hanky's like, howdy ho! Which That's is the, the same. The exact same thing <laughs> you've been doing the entire time. <sighs> Whatever. Stick around because coming next, it's Mike with the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now it's time to go over to Mike to see what he's been kafirtling with in the buzz. Kafirtling? Kafirtling, kafootling. Yes. Hey, um, have you ever been on a cruise? No. <laughs> Why did you laugh before you said no? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I am thinking about going on a cruise. Really? A river cruise. A European river. Why are you laughing? The ones that were advertised just before countdown. <laughs> After the stairlifts. <laughs> Saga. Saga <laughs> and before, before the, the chairs no, that I don't, you stand I don't, up. I would never, ever want to do one of those cruises on those big, hideous... Super sort of, yacht. Sort super of yacht things. Not for me. But I quite like, after watching a Jay McDonald river cruising special. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not, she's not on every single one. Yeah, no, I don't want her to be on it, but I liked the thing that she... What's was... wrong with Jay McDonald on a river cruise? Yeah, no, you're not from Leeds, me! Wakefield. Yeah, we know get it. What? Wakefield. Well, same. She says Wakefield. Well. It's... That's the drinking game, whenever she's on TV, have a bottle of vodka and a shot glass. Every time she says Wakefield, take oh, a shot. Oh, okay. We'd be drunk before the first break. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that, is, that is being investigated currently. Oh, okay. European River Cruise. Going on your own? No. Taking the other half? Yeah. Mum and Dad? Dog? No. No. That's all this. <laughs> Sound language for cruise. What are we talking about um, anyway? So the reason why I ask is because there's a danger to going on cruise. Is there? Yes. Um, has, been, has been discovered by an American gentleman called Mario. Mario. Right. Um, who's found that after being on cruise ships for 23 years, he can no longer walk straight on land. As his legs are wasted away beneath him. No, because the, the motion, he's used to the motion. Oh, OK. So when he's walking on land, he's, he's missing the motion. Oh, all right. So Why has he been on a cruise here for 22 years? Is he kind of can't wait to find his way off. Because he can. Um, he can. So a former financier um, has spent 23 years living on cruise ships because he says it's an escape from reality. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, because there's a thought process, by the time you consider it's like rent and utilities and that sort of thing, living on a cruise ship can actually work out quite cheap. Oh, OK. So he's been living on a cruise ship and now can't walk. Um, <laughs> he can only crawl. <laughs> exactly. Gaping. Um, <laughs> he's, only let, he's only touched land um, apart from a 15-month break from the waves due to COVID pandemic. Oh. So that's the only So is he saying the same ship or a number of different, different ships? Different ships. He goes on okay. different ships, so he gets to explore the world. Ship to ship to ship. He doesn't have to worry about housework or anything like that. It, you know, oh, everything's okay. provided for him. And he's worked out it's, it's cheaper for him than, than that. Um, he gave up a, lucru a lucrative, a lucrative oh, career in 1997. Wow. Um, and by the millennium, it embarks a new life at sea. Well, if he's got the funds to finance it, then good for him. Jelly yeah. eggs. Jelly eggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Squishy. Uh, <laughs> his legs are squishy and they should call them my squishy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's basically he's, he's given up and they can't walk on land anymore. Just can't walk, given up. Just can't walk. Never going back on land. Nope. What happens if the boat sinks? They he won't be on land. <laughs> It'll be in the sea. Yeah, but they'll have to go on the land. 
Can he not? Will it, does it affect him if he's in the water? Can he swim? Or does his legs just like move? His legs don't, haven't stopped working. Okay. They just come across to the motion of the ocean. Oh, okay. So he's used to the, the, the bobbing about. Right. So now it, when he's not bobbing about, he can't walk in straight legs. Mm. So it compensates. Knee replacements, I would imagine. I'd just be really drunk. Yeah. Because no, I, I can't walk in a straight line after no. several mm -hmm. shandies. Um, okay, so we'll move on then from, yeah. from the gentleman who can't walk straight. Captain Squishy Legs. <laughs> He's not a captain. He might um, as well be. <laughs> have you ever done anything against medical advice? Just, you know, living and breathing every day. You've been told not to by yeah. a doctor. <laughs> they've, tried, they've tried to turn that switch off many times. I've always defeated them. Defeated them. <laughs> <laughs> so we should be fighting them. Go ahead, get away from my life support machine. No, they turn it off. They think I've gone and I just go, all right, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. No, it's not your life support machine. <laughs> <laughs> Bob next to you has been very quiet. Anyway, um, Brazilian bodybuilder. Bodybuilder. Brazilian bodybuilder. Brazilian bodybuilder. Vladir Segato. Okay. At age 55. Um, has basically, he's passed away. Oh. Age 55. That's no age at all, is it? Exactly. And the reason why he's passed away, sadly, at 55, is because he kept injecting his body with oil. So the doctor said, what are you doing? He said, I'm injecting oil into my muscles to make them big and, and bouncy. And I went, please stop doing that. It's really bad for you. Big and bouncy. Big and bouncy. In Brazilian, obviously. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, but they said, please stop doing that. It's really bad for you. I went, no, I'm going to keep doing it. So he technically wasn't a bodybuilder because his muscles were not built. He, went, they were just he, injected he did them. bodybuilding. Okay. Um, and then basically went, oh, that's a big muscle. Oil, oil, Make oil. It bigger with Make oil. It bigger. Yeah. Big flabby muscle. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm not going to say I feel sorry for him because he's, you know, he did it himself, didn't he? Did it to himself. He did literally do it to himself. Yeah. 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 Um, but basically, they turned around to him and said, please stop, um, because it's really bad for you. It's going to kill you. And then he, you know, can't get any oil for my chips. Oh, I like to have chips on a Tuesday and there's no it's oil. That you bought them oil. What kind of oil is it? He's not going to get sunflower oil. cooking oil. <laughs> it's basically using lard. No, it's not using lard. It, it's, a, it's a synthetic oil. It's not like uh, sunflower right, okay. oil it was injecting in. Right, OK. But, yeah. Medical oil. Medically oils and things. OK. They've not said what oil Aromatherapy it is. Aromatherapy oils. Yes, it's Lavender. a Roma face. Yang yang. Yangy yang. <laughs> yangy yang. Yangy yang. And his biceps. Okay. And if you know how to say ylang ylang, <laughs> please share it with us on At The Good TV on our social media services. And that brings us to, <laughs> to, to, brings us to the story of the week. Sad that he's dead, but I bet he smells nice. Uh, it's not ylang ylang. The yangy langy lang. <laughs> it's not langy lang. Yang langy lang. No. How do you say it? Ylang ylang. Ylang ylang. Yeah. Story of the week, anyway. Um, so this is health related as well. Okay. But you don't live alone, do you? I don't what? Live alone. No. No. The people that you live with, how do they, they deal with your emissions of gases? Well, I'm they... never in the same room, so it doesn't, it's not an issue. Okay, so never have smells that cross over and... No. Never walk into the, the kitchen and go, oh, what's that stink? No. And you go, oh, it's strawberries. Don't ask. No. Never. No? Never. Okay. Um, well, this is a story about a, a gentleman who's had a, an argument with a, a housemate over the smell he's leaving in the kitchen as every morning he drinks his own urine. <laughs> what? Why, why, what? Is this what we're reduced to? <laughs> Drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, judging by that picture, he's doing him in a world of good. That's in tip-top health. <laughs> he looks a bit like Skeletor. It's <laughs> with a nice, a nice mason jar for <laughs> Yes. His own. His own. His own. Yes, he doesn't drink other people's. It's his own he drinks. Well, I mean, I suppose if it's your own. Yes. Do what you want with it. Um. So, his name is Brother Sage. Okay. <laughs> Says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. He's been drinking his pee for almost 20 years, since nice. a cure-all. Um, since what? A cure-all. So a cure is, is we is a cure-all for yeah, everything. anything he's got, yeah. Okay. Despite there being no scientific back, backing to that, 
Yeah, the 68 year old is so convinced that this is true, right? He's now selling an online course for 260 pounds. What, on how to drink your own Helps you unlock the secrets of your own Un the Unlock the secrets of your <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it can be used to treat everything from cancer to sunburn, is his claim. Wow. Yeah. Unlock the secrets. <laughs> it's like, oh, the secret is you had asparagus last night. There isn't a lot, to, really, is to tell. To tell you to do. You need a p <laughs> Get a glass. Drink it. Does he drink it warm or cold? Got all of ice cubes in there, slice. Bit of ice. Slice of lemon. <laughs> and a bit, bit of, of bit, of, bit, of, bit, of, bit of salt around the rim. <laughs> um, what he said is people drink it more often than the first thing in the morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> first thing in the morning and last thing at night. It's, and people that are on a detox or fasting do something called looping, um, which means that they collect everything throughout the day and drink it all the next morning. <gasps> I mean, is there any scientific evidence that you f the first pee of the day contains anything that is good, like nutrient-wise? So, so byproducts, so surely it's not a... It's your own byproduct, and the thing is that this is waste that your body's expelling, so you're putting... It's supposed to be in there. You're putting stuff back in that your body's yeah. trying to get rid of. It doesn't quite make sense. Um, but I always have a joke that, you know, things like... Um, vitamin tablets, uh -huh. right, and make you feel like you on a really good day, uh -huh. right? They give you expensive pee because you pee most of it out, uh -huh. right? So it's, you know, it's one of those things. He thinks he's doing him a world of good. If the, well, I mean... He's 68. He's 68. He doesn't, he doesn't look 68. Yes, he does. He looks about 90. He looks <laughs> Yeah. It can't be good for your teeth, drinking your own... <laughs> can't be good for your breath. <laughs> breath. So well, his, his housemates are really upset because they keep he keeps, puffs. leaves drops behind. A drops of filling up the jar. He's doing it in the kitchen. The dirty guy. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's the problem you have with it. I don't, Not the fact the whole, he's drinking. No, the whole thing is just rancid. But go to if you're going to do it, go to the go to the go to the bathroom. In whatever you're going to in. Then what does he do with it? I, I, do you know what? I've got too many questions, and I don't. I haven't really got the the energy to invest in this any further. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, right, well, well... thank you for that, yeah. Uh, my pleasure. <laughs> what is the world coming to? Anyway, stick around, as coming up, we have our Game of the Week. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Lazy Susan's Musical Roulette. And this is one for the cheating whore that is Mike. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. That's it. So off, <laughs> off you go, cheating whore. Game of the week. Are you ready, Mike? Yes. Okay. Spin that wheel. Spin the lazy Susan. Why is it called the lazy Susan? I don't know. Oh, eighties. How many top 20 UK singles did Status Quo have during their 80s? Is it 7, 13 or 18? Who? Oh. Status Quo. Um, the who? How many top 10s? Uh, top 20. Okay. Singles. What were the choices? <laughs> you weren't listening, were you? No. Okay. How many top 20 UK singles did Status Quo have during the 80s? Is it 7, 13 or 18? Oh. I know they had like Margarita Time. Do, 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 In a do. Bird of jelly time. It's Margarita Time. And then they had... Um, um, I'm going to say... 20. It's not one of the options. I know, because I forgot what they were. Seven, 13, 18. I'm going to say 13. Wrong, it was 18. Oh. All right, spinning again. Ooh, pop music. Pop, pop, pop music. What did Snoop Dogg change his name to in 2012? Just Snoop. Nope. Hey? 
No, snoot. Oh, I'm gone. No. Like... No. Let me have another try. Was it the lion? I just said it. Oh, I didn't hear you. So was... Oh, she didn't. Best one. <laughs> Rock music. Losing My Religion mm -hmm. was a hit for which alternative rock band in 1991? It, 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 it was R.E.M. It was R.E.M. Mm. Well, I'm having to be very careful about this because I had to ask one question nine times. <laughs> Next one. No, look. Oh, what a coinkidink. Oh, it's soundtracks. Which musical movie set in a Greek island was also the title of an ABBA track? Mamma Mia. No. Yes, it is. It was, you're right, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go again. Mamma Mia, one. Good. Mamma Mia, two. Not so good. Until Cher turned up. Not even then. That was brilliant. No, it wasn't. It was? Cher, Cher. Only she sounded like Cher. Pop music. Ant and Deck, mm -hmm. uh, known for hosting TV shows, I'm a Celebrity, and Saturday Night Takeaway. But what music hits did they release in 1995? Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble! It was their second single oh. in 1995, which was called... Let's get ready to rumble. It was hey. Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Oh, you were a... <laughs> oh. I got it right, didn't I? You did. Right. Why are you calling me a whore when you're getting it right? Because you nearly made me say that it was wrong. Where? <laughs> Next one, 80s. Who sang the hit song, Rock Lobster? That would be the B-52s. Yes, it would be. Well done. Na, 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 na. Rock Lobster! Na, 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 na. Rock Lobster! You see, every time I hear that song, I think of the Family Guy version of it. Oh, don't. I didn't watch. You're right, Lobster! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, pop music. Oh, wow. Good. Ed Sheeran, the shaved orangutan, names his guitar after people in his crew. Which of these is one of them? Bob, Keith, or Graham? He names his guitar after people is what? In his crew. In his crew? Yes. Which is, so which one of those names is it? Yes. Bob, Keith, or Graham? Keith. It is Keith, well done. I didn't know that. No, it's a random guess. 33% chance of winning. Yeah, just, yeah. I guess it's fine. Next one. What a dull man he is. It's a shaved orangutan. Pop music. Which American TV show was the first to give Justin Timberlake the spotlight? That would be the Mickey Mouse Club. No. It was. It wasn't. It was the all new Mickey Mouse. Oh, you just a. Oh, for God's sake. It was the same thing. It was a different show. It was the Mickey Mouse Club. The all new. Because they had to redo it. Because the old one was the black and white version. The all new one was the first colour one. After a hiatus. I don't care, Wall Street. Disney was a. Anyway. Oh, rock music. Completely by chance. I can't say this person's name. Leonard Skinner had a massive hit with which song that was also the title of a film starring Reese with a spoon? Well, am I supposed to know if you can't pronounce the name? L Y N Y R D. So I'm going to guess Leonard, spelled interestingly, and Skynard. No, I don't know. 
Na name a, a, a film with starring Reese Witherspoon. Legally Blonde. No, Sweet Home Alabama. Nah. Yeah. But I do like saying her name like you, it's like you've ordered something with a spoon. Reese with a spoon. I like when I say Spider-Man instead of Spider-Man. It's not like a surname. Oh, soundtracks. Will Smith. Will. Will Smith rapped about a fictional, apparently, government agency in which 1997 film? Men in Black. Indeed, Men in Black. Do, do, do the Men in Black. 1997. 1997, Lee. 1997, Lee. I was still in high school. Were you? You weren't. <laughs> oh, rock music. In which year did the Kinks form? I don't know. Have a guess. The Kinks? Yes. 1967. Oh, you were so close. 1964. Mm. I'll give you half a point. Oh, wow. Because I'm fair. Mm. I've spun that a little bit too hard. <sighs> it made me feel a bit dizzy. Oh, pop music. What was Lady Gaga's dress made from, causing controversy at the 2010... 2010! 12 years ago! MTV Music Video Awards. It was made out of meat. What I meat? Which, no, you don't need to know what kind of meat. It was made it's out of meat. specific. It's specific on here. Beef. Beef, correct. Well done. Don't need to know. I'll get it right anyway. It's just beef. Just meat. Just it meat. wasn't just meat, it was beef. It was specifically beef. Apparently it's been preserved and it's in some sort of museum now. Along with Diana's dresses. <laughs> <laughs> it was the laugh of the guy. It's Diana's it. famous sausage dress. <laughs> yes. Rock music. At what age did Kurt Cobain, Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix die? Oh, it's famous, isn't it? Because it's, they call it the Something Something Club. I they think, do. I think it's, is it the 27 Club? It is the 27 Club. Well done. We're playing a game at work with people I've outlived. Didn't um, Amy Winehouse die at 27? No, well? she died at 38. No, she didn't. She wasn't 38. Amy Winehouse wasn't 38 when she died. She was. No, she wasn't. She was. Mike, she wasn't 38. How old was she then? She was 27. She wasn't 27. Oh, God, I'm going to have to Google it now because this is ridiculous. 38? <sighs> How old people. was... Who? Amy Winehouse. How old was Amy Winehouse when she... 27. 1983, 2011. 38? He's doing it on purpose to wind me up and he succeeded. <laughs> yes, I know which buttons to press. I have outlived Anna Nicole Smith, though, who died at 39. Nice. So, yeah. I liked Anna Nicole Smith. But I'm I'm bored of that now. You're bored? Is that it? Is that bored. done? Oh, all right, then. Okay. okay. Well, stay with us, because after this, it's that science that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's that part of the show where we pray for the rapture to take us away. It's Mike and that's science that is. That science that is. So in, in, in a recent heat, Mm -hmm. I thought I'd, I'd do something that adds more heat into the studio for you. Lovely. Because I thought you'd appreciate that. My legs are spread so wide right now uh -huh. that there's a, there's a... There's a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's like a burning bushfire down there. <laughs> Old swamp. Anyway, um, this is a bit of a revelation about chocolate. A revelation about chocolate? Specifically, um, I'm going to say that the name of them, which is a 
Blake. Crumbliest, flakiest. Something else. Chocolate. Oh, crumbliest, flakiest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the revelation that they, they are the, the chocolate that can withstand ridiculous amounts of heat. Can it? Yes. So normal chocolate melts quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've all reached for a Mars bar and gone, oh, no. Well, it's been liquidy inside, haven't we? I, I like melted chocolate, though. I know you like melted chocolate. I'm not one of these people that puts chocolate in the fridge. I love putting chocolate in the Fools. fridge. What? Fool! I love a, a nice cold bar of, of, of Bourneville. Up your poop shoot. <laughs> in my face. Um, we are scientists have discovered that you can actually set them on fire before they melt. Oh, wow. That's how good they are. Can you still eat them afterwards? Okay, if you want to. It's burnt chocolate. Um, want to crack on. I um, so yeah, we've actually got proof that I'm not making this up. Okay. It's been shared. Is that right, Dean? There you go. And it's sciencefocus.com that's published the research. Sciencefocus.com? Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. All you geeks. The people that are trying to desperately put something together to fill 11 minutes of TV. Um, and they did things like microwave them, they even attacked attack them with blow torches. Send them to the moon. No, because it's not very hot on the moon. Is Jupiter hot, Saturn, Uranus? My oh, Uranus is very hot. <laughs> um, but I thought we'd replicate one of the experiments in the studio today. God damn. Which is try and melt it with fire, right? I thought we would do the same thing. Now, I was going to bring in a Bunsen burner, oh. but realised that's putting you with fire is never good because when you had a candle you poured it all over the desk. Oh, we have no gas supply in here. I was going to bring bottled gas. Oh, well that would have been wise, wouldn't it? Not with you around, no. That's it's just small, confined space. <laughs> yeah, which is why we have lighters instead. Okay, so what we want to do is I've given you a selection of, well, I'm not going to say flakes because they weren't flakes, they're knockoff flakes because I couldn't find any actual flakes. Oh. Um, so I just want you to try and set fire to it. Or melt it. See, look, I've actually caught caught a flame before it's melted. And go. Your light has got that thing on it that stops you from. No, that's the that's the level. You just push it down. I'm trying to. It. Oh. It's, it's catching fire. I set it on fire, Mike. Yeah, but it's not melted. No. Right, and mine's still, mine's still actually smoking right now. Like a cigar. It's like a chocolate cigar without the cancer. Um, but that's because the way it works is because it's got lots of layers. Mm hmm. Okay. With a normal chocolate bar, when you've got it in the bar shape, you take it to a. Ooh. No, it smells like poo! Smells like burning chocolate. Not nice smell. No, it's not. I thought you wanted to eat it. I'm just looking at my fingers. Ah, uh, okay. So you've got another three there that I'm assuming you're going to just try and consume at some point. Mm. Yeah. Um, so what it is is because when you get normal chocolate bar, you put it onto a vibration plate. It knocks all the airs out and it also causes all of the, the layers of fat and molecules to, to level up. The reason why it melts is because it slides off. All of the other substances slide off each other. Whereas in the flake, because it's got the little layers and the little pockets of air act as insulation. Stops it melting before it burns and bursts into flames. Okay, just... I'll back in. Is, that, is that all we're doing? That's literally all we're doing. So, is that it? That's it. Just setting fire to chocolate. If we try eating it. I don't want to eat the burnt bit. Why not? Because it's crusty and horrid. It's only burnt. It's carbonised. It's caramel. Mmm, caramel. No, it doesn't taste nice. What's it taste of? Ashy. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to like your elbows was put for the gallery there. <laughs> no. Not the same. <laughs> you just try and lick your elbow. Yeah. My ashy what? elbow. That's something that's not actually possible to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to burn anymore. Yeah, I could have a good time. Are you gonna eat a bit of burnt chocolate? Yeah, it's not nice, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, bit to take the right away. You <laughs> deep throat a 99 flake. 
Hold on. <laughs> wow. Well, you that... putting chocolate in the name of science. Mm hmm. Yes. Got a point to say. That is class telly, that. I'm sorry. Why am I the single one? You're regurgitating chocolate you just deep throated, and I can't get laid for more, more than once in a row. What can I say? I'm gay. <laughs> what can I say? I'm gay. I'll <laughs> just, uh, just wait for you to finish. Are you done? I'm finished now. Can you talk now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say something then. That was very enjoyable, thank you. That was very enjoyable. <laughs> Wait for you to finish picking your teeth. I'm fine, I'm you ready. Done? You're done? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay, cool. Um, so, what uses do you think we could use for flakes now that we know that they're indestructible? I don't really care. Stick them in an ice cream and eat them. Not burn them. I said stick them in an ice cream and eat them. Yeah. No. Re recover the spatial? No. No. Don't care, do you? No. You've eaten the four. Yeah, four. You're happy. I'm fine now. But yeah. Um, but for now, that's science, that is. That's science, that is. You enjoy that one? I enjoyed the eating of the chocolate. The rest of it, pretty poor. But you know, science isn't always thrilling. Last week, it's you barely had us, thrilling. Last week, you had us making plasticine models of each other with our eyes closed. The evidence is behind you. The evidence of, eat, of melting chocolate <laughs> is there. Yes. Yeah. I thought that was fascinating when I heard. Yeah. You got to eat chocolate. Mm -hmm. out, out of all the ones we've done previously, where is it up there or is it down there? I think they're never up there, Mike. Oh no, because you've enjoyed. We made ice cream. You really oh, yeah, enjoyed yeah, that yeah, one. Enjoyed that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's. <laughs> it's what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, it's science. It is science. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Nobody said it was going to be interesting. Doesn't say that's interesting. No. Doesn't say that's interesting, entertaining. No, it just says that's science that is. And it's science. <laughs> yes. um, but that's the end of the show for this week. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And on podcast services and YouTube, just search for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. You're warm, aren't you? The wrong way around. But waft your burnt chocolate to me. At least I was brave enough to try it. <laughs>